Hello, and welcome to Introduction to Industrial CO2 Cutting Lasers, the first in our Metal Fabrication Solutions webinar series hosted by Connor Manufacturing Services. I am your host, Gabby Sloss, and I am the Marketing Coordinator here at Connor. It is a pleasure to introduce our presenter for this webinar, Eric Watson, who is a process engineer and one of our laser operators. Now I will hand it over to Eric for his presentation on Introduction to Industrial CO2 Cutting Lasers. Thank you, Gabby. Hello, my name is Eric Watson, and I'm a process engineer for Connor Manufacturing Services. I have eight years of experience working with five different types of CO2 lasers and lead and advise the laser cutting department here at Connor. Let's get started. Now, everyone has heard and seen lasers around, be it in the form of a level, pointer, show, or even in the movies. What exactly is this laser and how does it work? Well, laser is an acronym which stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. In a CO2 laser, this emission occurs when a molecule is exposed to an electrical current, causing the orbiting electrons to become excited and shift outwards in orbit. Eventually, these electrons return to their lower state, also called ground state. The shift releases the energy from the excitement in the form of a specific wavelength of light. This light is then captured by reflecting it back and forth via mirrors in a glass tube known as a resonator. Here's the resonator in action. This light then travels through a series of lenses and mirrors to the torch nozzle and is projected onto the material for processing. Here is a CO2 laser in process. As the beam of light captured and emitted from the resonator is in the infrared spectrum, it is invisible to the human eye. Any sparks you see are superheated pieces of metal. Now notice the motion of this cut. The beam first pierces through the material and then begins to follow the cutting contour. Let's take a different look at the cut. This material is quarter inch mild steel. The feed rate and amount of time necessary to pierce vary widely by the material type and thickness. However, they will always conform to a pierce contour process. Let's take a look at a cross-section of what is occurring. As you can see, the nozzle doesn't come into direct contact with the material. The beam is focused onto the cutting surface and heats the material to a liquid form. The gas is blown through the nozzle at the same time as the beam and blows the liquefied material out through the bottom of the cut. Since power, gas flow, and movement of the laser can be controlled with great precision, the resulting parts show a clean and accurate cut. This here is the part you are watching being cut. So now that we know a little about the process, let's take a look at how it would best apply as a fabrication option. When qualifying a part for laser cutting, there are three major questions to ask. First, is the material suitable for laser cutting? There are many types of CO2 lasers set up for cutting pipes and multiple axes. However, most lasers are designed for cutting sheet or plate. These lasers are designed for steel and aluminum processing. Most industrial lasers can cut mild steel to at least half inch and aluminum and stainless to around 3 16 inch thick. Lasers are also capable of cutting some organic materials such as acrylic, plywood, hardwood, UHMW, PETG, and Delrin. Many materials are not suitable for laser cutting due to toxic gas emission, reflectivity of the beam, or low melting points. So now that we have qualified our material, we need to qualify the resulting part from the cutting process. 
When we talk about the results, we are basically referring to what happens to the edge left over by the cut. Now let's skip ahead for a moment and take a look at a magnified edge plasma cut part and discuss the edge quality. Using a typical contour cut process, some secondary deburring process is usually necessary. In laser cutting, this process is generally not necessary, however should definitely be considered when selecting this process as some edge issues can occur. The heat affected zone refers to the area near the cutting edge which is heated by conduction from the beam to a point where the mechanical properties of the metal are changed. This is an image of what we were looking at before with the highlighted area of the heat affected zone, which is right here. Now this is an important consideration when selecting this project process as it can cause a brittle edge during forming. The final question to ask is, is the production method ideal for laser cutting? Okay, well first let's compare a contour cut part to a punched part. A contour cut part refers to the method of processing and with any of the contour cut methods you start at a point, begin cutting, and end at a point. With a punch method you simply cut the entirety of the feature at once. Now it's pretty easy to tell which process is faster, but you need to take into account the tooling factor. There is virtually no setup required on a laser, no specialized tools to accomplish a specific feature to purchase, and no commitment to size or shape of these tools. Careful analysis needs to be done to determine if punching is worth the time, risk, and financial investment required to make the part. This is a typical cost comparison model for punched parts versus contour cut parts. Note that the highlighted area is ideal for laser cutting. Generally, the cost of tooling is a factor until approximately the mid-volume area where it becomes more cost efficient to punch these parts out. This area right here. Where this point lies on an individual part may vary greatly depending on the complexity, amount of features, and type of material but we'll always follow this curve. Now let's take a look at contour cut processes after we talk about punching these processes. Punching punch processes uh, after tooling costs um, have the advantage of generally being more inexpensive to produce and they don't have a heat affected zone. Lasers have no tooling costs. Uh, and as we spoke about earlier, have shorter lead times and relatively painless revisions due to the fact that there are no tooling, there is no tooling involved. Let's take a look at the contour cut processes. A water jet works by shooting an extremely high pressure of stream of water with media at the cutting surface. This process is very similar to laser cutting. Now a water jet will cut a wider variety of materials and does not have a heat affected zone. However, lasers will give you a faster feed rate and a faster pierce time through most of those materials we discussed earlier. We can also consider plasma cutting. Plasma is a uh, more generally a more inexpensive machine cost and you're able to cut a larger range of materials. But again, like the comparison to the water jet, a laser will give you a more precise part, better edge quality, will have a smaller heat affected zone than plasma cutting, and you'll get a better yield out of your sheets of material. Well, to summarize, laser cutting should be considered assuming it meets your material needs, your process needs, and your production needs. And while every part varies, these are the basic criteria for determining whether or not your part should be considered for laser processing. Thank you for your time. Now I'll pass it back to Gabby. Thank you, Eric, for that educational presentation.
Okay, well, that is all the time we have for today. Again, I would like to thank Eric for his time. If you have additional questions regarding this webinar or about how laser cutting will, be, will benefit your metal fabrication needs, please contact us. You can reach Eric or myself at the emails posted here. In addition, you can visit our website to learn more about Connor's manufacturing capabilities. I would like to thank you for attending today's session. We hope to see you all again for our next Metal Fabrication Solutions webinar focusing on the industrial assembly process welding. Until next time, have a great day.